disruption that morphed us from these immature, hallway blocking freshmen to what we are now. A group of transformed individuals that are finding ourselves faced with entering the adult world as college students, members of the military, employees, and even parents. And it's scary to think that 12 years ago we were in our first year of school, but 12 years from now, we're going to be 30. And maybe that seems like a long time to you, but I know that my physics class was freaked out when Mr. Richardson pointed that out. So what I want to say to you, class of 2013, is to let the years change you. And change is the means of growth, and chances are pretty good that 30-year-old you is going to think 18-year-old you was a lot stupider than you currently think 14-year-old you was. And that's okay. Be stupid and learn from it. But while you're becoming the person you are, don't feel like you can only be one thing. We've all spent the last four years making liberal use of the phrase, don't judge me, right? And it's because we don't like being labeled based on actions or opinions that are only a fraction of who we are. We don't like being given one term that defines us, and yet we hold on to each other at some point. If you're going to take anything away from high school, it should be this. Grades do not define you. Who you hang out with does not define you. Your hair, your clothes, your race, does not define you. How fast you get to Little Caesars on Thursday, does not define you. You define you. You're the compilation of all of these things. So if sometime in the future someone tells you that you're complicated, say good. Because you don't want to be stereotyped as the hipster, the weirdo, or the nerd. Nobody likes that. So don't subscribe to the label that people give you, and don't label people yourself. There's more to everyone that one, than what any of us likes to think. Nobody is just one thing. So, hopefully, we're all exiting high school with this knowledge, as well as a wiser, more experienced outlook on life, and the excellent education we've been provided. So I'd like to conclude with a big thank you to all of the staff for teaching my classmates and I what we needed to know, as well as encouraging us on our way to becoming individuals. I know we'll remember our trips to chemistry land with Ms. Hansen, being tramposos en la clase de Senorita Wendell, Mr. Hallman's thinking out loud, and Mr. Richardson religiously honoring every Friday with 110 decibels of Rebecca Black. You guys are as much a part of our high school memories as all the stupid and wonderful stuff we did with our friends on the weekends and in your classes when you weren't paying attention. So thanks for everything. And I was actually offered $40 to end my speech with the quote from Bryce that starts off, catch you on the flip side, and then ends rather inappropriately. I also wanted to jump off the stage, but the formal nature of graduation and the way this place is set up aren't exactly conducive to any such shenanigans. So I'm just going to say this. Be yourself, make good choices, and remember the years we spent growing up together, both good and bad. In this moment, there is not a single one of you that I want to see trip on that stage tonight. Good luck, class of 2013. Trying to inspire them was no easy task. 
I sat down one night and I just thought about this speech. I wanted it to be memorable. I wanted everyone to enjoy it. I wanted the perfect blend of humor and seriousness. I wanted Batman quotes. The more I dreamed of this ultimate speech, the more excited I became. My fellow classmates know me as a hardworking student, and not once did I let senioritis affect me. Uh, until now. Uh, it was coming down to crunch time on this essay, so I just found one off the internet, had Mr. Crispin help me cite it, and well, here we are today. I'm just kidding, this is a B.J. Miller original. Fellow classmates, faculty, friends, and family, we gather here today to celebrate an amazing achievement. For 12 years, the class of 2013 has climbed a steep mountain, striving for the top, which would be graduation. For sure, there were some pitfalls along the way, shrinking our class size down to one of the smallest Reese Popper has had in years. But I believe, though, that you have the best and brightest Reese Popper has to offer the world sitting in front of you as I speak. When this night ends, the parties will begin. Celebrations at grad night and open houses will follow in the weeks to come after the ceremony. The summer will be filled with memories as friends soak up that precious fact that they have graduated from high school. The long journey is finally over. Soon, the summer will dwindle down to its last few weeks and friends will begin to separate. Soon, some may be going to the same college, but others chose different paths to follow. For some, college will start up and many of my fellow classmates and I will begin another journey that will put, it, put us at the end of our schooling. At some point, a certain moment will be experienced by all of the class of 2013. It may not be the first week of summer, or the first day of college, or even those fateful days when you apply for the job you want to pursue. But it will happen. It will start with the nostalgia. A certain object or event will trigger the memories that have been stored inside of you for however long it has been. You will look back on these days and remember all the friends and special bonds formed here, formed here at high school. The teachers that have inspired you and pushed you to break, break your limits. And of course, the uh, Reese Puffer, Puffer Bowl lunches. Some of you may be thinking, yeah, that's not going to happen to me. Once I get my diploma, I'll forget this school. I ask you then, why is the stadium full of Reese Puffer graduates from years past? It's because they're here for you, because they have immense respect for this school, and it also brings back memories for them. They will never get a chance to experience high school again, never walk with their friends to Miss Hansen's class, or throw paper airplanes in the lunchroom. That time for them is gone, and soon all of you will have that realization. But one thing that keeps all these Reese Puffer graduates connected to this school is their memories. L. M. Montgomery once said, nothing is ever really lost to us as long as we remember it. I don't want any of us to forget about the times we have experienced at Reese Puffer. I want us to embrace them as a class, hold on to them and cherish them become, because this is the last time we will ever call ourselves Reese Puffer High School students of Reese Puffer High School. These will be the last few moments where some friendships will remain intact. Make the most of them, most of them while you can because the wind of change is coming upon us and everyone must accept that fact. On a brighter note though, the class of 2013 is full of talented and amazing individuals. Let us not forget as we step into the future that appearances will not define us. A billionaire playboy that dresses up as a bat once said, it's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. I want the class of 2013 to remember this as they progress in life. The actions they perform in life can change the world around them, and it's those deeds that people remember. It's the actions that set the world in motion, not, one, not how one looks. Always have compassion for other people. You never know what someone else is going through. We're all humans here, and we're in this together. All of us have done things in high school that have defined us, whether it be stepping up to be the team captain for a sport, studying hard to do well on an exam, or even helping someone who's dropped their lunch accidentally in the lunchroom. The hard work and determination that every student puts into their work, sport that they play, and everyday life shows the people around them what kind of man or woman they are. Carry that hard work and determination into college and the future, and all of us will be known, not by our appearances, but by our accomplishments and the actions that we have done. What man or woman will you become? My goal is to be the next Bruce Wayne. Finally, I'd like to thank all the parents, teachers, counselors, and RV staff members for without them, this would not be possible. 
It's the motivation and support each one of these individuals provides that has pushed these students to reach their potential, to be here today. Parents have devoted countless hours to raising us and nurturing us into who we are. They are our biggest fans going to sporting events, theater performances, band concerts, and the Pops concerts. They volunteer many hours and with all their heart to be there for, for us. No matter what, they will always love us, and every one of the parents out there tonight is proud of what the class of 2013 has accomplished. For the teachers, they have opened the realm of possibilities for their students. They have taught us useful information and strived for us to do great things in their classrooms. Throughout these four years in high school, the student-teacher bond has grown. I know that I will miss many of my teachers, and I'm sure my classmates will miss some of theirs as well. These teachers are not just figureheads that show us something new each day. They care about us as individuals and look forward to all the things we are going to do in our lives. With that, I believe recognition is in the order, so can we get a round of applause for the parents, teachers, and staff who have shown the care and respect that has gotten us here today. I want to end this quickly, but with a powerful quote, one of my favorite. Ayn Rand once wrote, if you saw Atlas, the giant who holds the world on his shoulders, if you saw that he stood, blood running down his chest, his knees buckling, his arms trembling, but still trying to hold the world aloft with the last of his strength, and the greater his effort, the heavier the world bore down upon his shoulders, what would you tell him to do? Similar to Atlas, our class has carried the weight of responsibilities and the hard work that came with being a high school student. Now I ask my fellow classmates to shrug, relieve the, yourself of this way, for high school is done. This is an amazing accomplishment, and all of you deserve this recognition for your hard work and effort. Tonight you will finish a long 12-year road that you have traveled. Soak it up, because this is our moment. This action right here has defined all of us. I'm so proud of each and every single one of my classmates, and I cannot wait to see what we can all accomplish. Whatever it may be, it's going to change the world. So smile a lot, laugh a lot, and love your life. It's the only one you've got. Hold on to these memories and never forget your time as a Reese Puffer Rocket. Congratulations to my fellow classmates. We finally made it. With that, I end with a quote from Dr. Seuss. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Thank you, have an amazing night, and may the odds be ever in your favor. Selected by this class to be this year's graduate speaker is Thomas Grant. Basic education have given us. 
Even William Shakespeare had to learn his ABCs, although I imagine they had a different song for them back then. Einstein certainly had to solve for X in a few basic equations before he tackled relativity and grew that wicked mustache. And Picasso had to master painting realistically before he decided you can totally get away with painting two eyes on the same side of the face. These were truly great men, all of whom contributed to our little world in lasting ways with their works and discoveries. Although they are exemplary figures in history now, they were teenagers once. They grew up, learned about the world, and left their marks on it. And now it's our turn to do the same. It is our time to mold society to our liking. And with that power and responsibility, to do something wonderful. It won't be easy after today. The world is largely indifferent to our hopes and dreams. There will be obstacles, always, whether they are expected or entirely sporadic. But it is up to us, not only to overcome our personal struggles, but the problems handed to our generation by circumstances beyond our control. As Kurt Vonnegut once said, history is merely a list of surprises. It can only prepare us to be surprised yet again. Looking out at all, at all of you is a true comfort because I know that we can handle life's surprises, that we will be good to each other as human beings should. We will do fantastic things in our time, and if at some point you find that your goal is a bit farther away than you had anticipated, remember, it took 13 years just to become average. Kurt Vonnegut, my favorite author if you couldn't tell, also once said, true terror is waking up one morning to discover that your high school class is running the country. While I find this quote humorous, I also disagree in this case. Things are a bit off these days. There's, these are uncertain times in our country, but in our collective ambition lies a great hope. And I know our generation will be the one leading the country to a newly found yet familiar glory. We shall make progress, innovate, and leave things tidier than they were when we got here. Though each of our experiences shall be truly unique, we will always be able to look back on this day and recall what it was like to be average for a brief moment in time, armed only with these diplomas and the clean slates that we will be engraving for the rest of our lives. Thank you. And now, our high school principal, Mr. Daniel Beckman, will give his address. Good evening, parents and family members of the graduating class of 2013. We're glad that you are here to celebrate this wonderful occasion that brings us here to the L.C. Walker Arena. Before I uh, speak on behalf of the high school administration to the graduates out there. I want to say thank you to the high school teachers and the staff for all the hard work that you put forth over four years working with this class. Thank you for the compassion, the drive, the kick in the pants, the finger in the nose at them at times to get them to this point. Thank you so very, very much. You will hear later in this ceremony Mr. Kurt Crouch, 13-year senior class advisor, call each name of our graduating class. Mr. Crouch is also graduating this year after serving Reese Buffer District for 33 years. Congratulations, Mr. Crouch. See, I want to talk to you about the audience. I've got some messages for you, too. I'm going to try to pick a little bit from what was said in those wonderful speeches, and they were absolutely awesome. So impressed. You know, it started, actually, on uh, Sunday at Baccalaureate with Pastor Schultz. He shared with some of the graduates that were attending. He said, you know, uh, one of the things that you're going to be facing is the opportunity to demonstrate a level of courage. Seniors soon to be out in the world, much better than average. 
you are going to be faced with the opportunity to demonstrate courage. I heard Alyssa say, change really is going to be the growth that really will define you because change is inevitable. BJ mentioned the winds of change, and he also said that it's action. It's action that sets the world in motion. I can't agree with him more. And as Tommy so eloquently said, you know, after you get your high school diploma, you are completely average. What's interesting is, where do we go from this moment in time? Because seniors, when I think about where you can go, I've got a couple opportunities for you to consider and ponder this evening. One of your graduating peers on their graduation cap that says, be the change. Kennedy Hester has got on her cap, Be the Change. And it's interesting that Mr. Edwards was talking about perspective. And he was thinking about what it's going to be like if we were to go out into the future and when we come back in time to really take a look, what will that perspective be like? Here's what I would offer you. A sense of hope. Three things. And they all are about being. You know, see, success Success is about having. Excellence is about being. Here's my challenge. I challenge you as you leave this place to be excellent in everything that you do. And see you know what's going to happen? That will definitely define you from this moment and it will set you apart from being just ordinary or average as Tommy mentioned. But look at me and listen, you know what it's going to take? It's going to take persistence. It's going to take tenacity. It's going to take consistency to make that happen. Because you know something? That is a choice. It didn't cost you anything. If you wake up every day and say, I will do the very best I can. I will be excellent in everything that I do. Audience, can you imagine? Community members, can you imagine if everybody in this space woke up every day and said, today I will be the very best that I can be. I will be excellent in everything I say, everything I do. See, when somebody's ordinary or average, what they will do is this. They will go through what you believe are the expectations, but the excellent person will do more. You will know that when you think that because that is a choice. And the more you choose that, the more that becomes habit for me. The second B, be altruistic in your thinking. You know the word is kind of big, altruistic. But you know what that means? It means this. It means think about others. Think about the common welfare of people. How many have heard that we live in a dog-eat-dog -dog society? It's all about us. It's not about principle. It's about getting one up on somebody else. Can you imagine, seniors, if you were to think with every one of your actions that what you will do will be a result of what will be better for other people? Are you ready? That, too, is a choice. And the more that you think altruistically, that becomes your lifestyle. And the last one is probably the most difficult thing to do. And as Pastor Schultz mentioned, you want to talk about taking something on that needs courage, and here it is. It is. Be benevolent in your serving. What I mean by that is, when you give up your time, can you give up your time without asking for anything else in return? See, because this world does have a mentality of, what's in it for me? Hold on, before I can roll in your idea, what's in it for me? That's courage, if you can stand up in the face of this world and go against the grain of what I would consider to be mediocrity. Can you give up yourself without expecting anything in return? Because if you can do that, this world, will have change that will be impactful in this community, in the state across this country. Seniors, three things. Be excellent in everything you do. 
Be an altruistic thinker. Think of others when you make choices. And third, be someone that gives of their time, gives of their talents, gives of their money for the benefit of others without asking anything in return. I think this of the, of the crowd. If we had everybody in here thinking along those same lines, and remember, success is about having, excellence is about being. I believe this class, as BJ said, it might be a little bit smaller, but who's out in front? They can and they will meet the demands that this world's going to call on you. Choose this day. Choose this day to be excellent. Choose this day to be altruistic. Choose this day to be benevolent. benevolent. Seniors, I wish you the very best. And now, at this time, I would ask that all our P alumni that are in this arena, would you please stand up?